What's going on everybody? It is Matt Sarmiento from Sarmiento Motorsports here with you checking out some more tech tips and some cool products to install on your YZ450R. So I also want to start off and say thank you for everybody who's been watching. We've been having a lot of positive comments and feedback. It honestly has been fantastic and it really has been um, our key thoughts to starting a YouTube channel is to help out with the community whether it's XC, MX, just a casual, you know, weekend, you know, folks, doesn't matter, you know, just to have fun and to help instill some confidence, you know, that there's no mysteries to this. Let's go out, let's have fun. And the things that you can do to improve your machine for its performance and capabilities and also tech tips and maintenance as well. So and we're going to do some other things here in the future as well. Um, also two updates as far as the exhaust shootout. We have, we had systems come in, no problem. And then that, the, uh, anyways, there are some some wrinkles in there so to speak and the manufacturer taking care of that you know getting us what we're looking for we're looking for quiet systems as well so we're trying to you know i'm trying to do the exhaust shootout in the criteria for also to people that are you know race whatnot for closed course competition you know that way it's it's not going to be nothing um that's going to disqualify them as well and also too when you're riding woods as well there's a lot of places too that you your exhaust system can't be too loud so you know the quality sound performance uh, on customer service and i am seeing the customer service side of it on a lot of all these systems and i'm very grateful for that so that way we can give you guys a good review so anyways what we're discussing today we were talking about oil breathers ais delete before parking rate block offs timing plugs speed sensor block offs from 30 motorsports awesome stuff i uh, wanted to also show you too the my my other go-to oil breather is the uh, rp breather as well so I've run this, I have this actually currently on my race machine. I've used the 38 Motorsports on my other machine that I had sold um, last year. And uh, fantastic, I mean, I've used it for years. Um, with 30 Motorsports, no problem. And this is also my other go-to breather as well. Very elegant, very sleek. This mounts right up by the, uh, one of the bolts on the uh, cylinder head. Um, and the oil comes in on this one. Okay, so it comes in on the inlet and then comes back out this way to the engine. And this would be for excess pressure to relieve, right? So atmospheric pressure, all right? I like it, it's out of the way on the engine so it doesn't get in the way of the oil the oil stick. I've seen other ones get in the stick. I like the design, the design is very elegant, it's sleek. Um, so that's also one I highly, highly recommend. So check them out at rprace.com, fantastic. And also too, my, uh, which I'm gonna show you how to get this guy on. This is definitely my go-to exhaust heat shield for your mid pipe. This beast right here, the RP heat shield. Doesn't look like a lot, but let me tell you, it will save you a lot of burnt boots. I promise you. Um, so when we do exhaust testing, well, that's one thing I cannot stand is getting my boots fried or the back of my leg. I have some some pretty good some pretty good war injuries on the back of my right leg from the exhaust system coming out. And right here, it's showing that this is installed on my race bike, my race machine here, the uh, RP heat shield. And this we're gonna install on our on our practice bone stock machine, or maybe it'll be a race machine, who knows? But at this point in time, we're not sure what it's gonna be, but we definitely know it's the R&D testing machine for sure. So I'm gonna show you how to get this guy on there. So is it a little challenging once you already have the nerf bars on? It can be, I'm gonna show you some quick tips on how to do it, not too hard two bolts and if you if you do have help it does make it easier but i already showed you guys how to put the nerf bars on and actually get the uh get them lined up and then bolt it in so this is a, a little more trickier um but not impossible to do by yourself so show you that and definitely to finish off as far as this point would be the oversized rear brake pedal from 38 motorsports um so really looking forward to this very elegant design very awesome love it love the craftsmanship and uh, show you how to get this guy on there as well. So show you the tools that it takes, and we're just gonna go for it. So we'll, uh, I'll show you guys maybe on another video how to install this guy and route it. I have a 38 Motorsports one on there right now. So I'm, um, uh, like I said, both of those have been my go-to. I have problematic, no, no problem. So um, I'll run it on every motor that I've had from using it on C12 to MR12 and seeing you know it's flying the flying colors and not had a single issue 
and especially with the Florida heat here, it is it is rough. So and in the sand, oh my gosh, the sand it will will do some damage on your engine. So also too, we did a little tire upgrade on our machine. So we put it with a uh, full set of GPS wheels with the the uh, bead lock rings with the uh, the carbon kind of rings, basically more like a polyurethane carbon ring and a um, multi wheel pattern, just in case you never know. You go both ways. Um, with a fresh set of CST uh, Pulse MXRs. I've used those before and they've hooked up really, really good. So, you know, getting our machine ready to start track riding it here soon. So, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a big, big, big deal. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And we're gonna show you some of the, the results of, you know, all the hard work and, you know, also how to keep the machine, you know, well maintained, you know, on and off the track. So, and also to show you some, we have some other things on our race machine. We're gonna show you how to, you know, like to replace like brakes, rotors, things like that. Season's already going, and I can tell you right now, wearing parts out. And it's gonna happen, it's racing, it is gonna happen. But the things to look at, things to check for on your routine maintenance, all right? So we're gonna get started, we're gonna go right to it. We got some cool things to put on, and let's get going with it. All right, so here's our heat shield. And our heat shield goes right here, in this area. Obviously we have to take these bolts out to mount it flush head to the subframe um, the stock exhaust has a heat shield which is nice however once the stock exhaust is ditched the aftermarket ones don't have uh, a heat shield and you can get um, a heat shield that clamps onto the exhaust which is nice too but for what I'm gonna be doing I do I do change them out a lot especially when we're gonna be doing exhaust testing and so that way this right here stays on the machine so this isn't gonna go with the exhaust system so you know there's other options to uh, other heat shield that I've seen work really well is the four works and then you can mount it to the to the mid pipe But this I like to say I like because it stays on the machine. So if I pull the exhaust off, I have to pull it off really quick um, It's I don't have to worry about that 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 stays there. So there's tools that we're going to need because I did change this to a 10 uh, I want to say uh, I've seen these be a 12 or 13 or also a 6 mil But mine is a 10. That's what we're using a 10 socket and this is the factory five millimeter Allen. So this one's gonna come out and this one's gonna get loosened up or it could also come out as well. So we're gonna take these guys out. And I'm gonna use my uh, 3 8 impact gun to speed up the process. So that one I usually just leave, leave loose there. I just keep flip it around. Okay, now here comes the, here comes the tricks. More tricks. So remember, when the Nerf bars, when uh, on the installation video, I actually took my thumb. So my thumb comes up here on the top, and I grab the bottom, bottom Nerf bars to, to like pull it up, like really squeezing it. We're gonna do the same thing when taking out. That way you don't strip the bolt on the way out. So I got our 10 on there. And there we go. Just that simple. And like I said, I like to use a little bit longer bolt than the factory bolt. Um, that way to give me, you know, a little more peace of mind. So it just comes down to that. I mean, cause I do need that nerf for you know, to be doing this thing. So this guy can be a little challenge to get in there. Sometimes. It totally depends on your nerfs. So this one, we're probably going to end up taking a screwdriver from the back. A flat screwdriver with a... Uh, on a rag and kind of prying it out just a little bit, just enough to get this guy out. Or if you do have some help, maybe a helper, they could pull back on that. And they could actually pull back on this nerf bar. You know, there's a couple different ways you could do it. Um, I mean, I've seen people loosen, I mean, you can loosen the bottom paint bolts. We're gonna try and avoid that. I mean, this thing is fitted pretty, pretty well on there. So that I'm happy with, as far as those nerf bars, they are fit on there pretty good. We just need to. We just need to move that back a little bit to get just a little bit of space. Let me go grab a quick screwdriver, flathead. All right, well, I guess I should have said more like a small pry bar instead of a screwdriver, since I'm by myself. If you have help, this it's a little bit easier. You know, it totally depends on the tools you have. If you have a small screwdriver, flat screwdriver, you could use that with some help. Um, this is what I use when I'm by myself, so this is about like a uh, I don't know, 12 inch pry bar little bit of an angle on it and that's the uh, key secret so we're going to go for that i usually like to put a shop rag on the end it doesn't have to be anything 
special shop rag t-shirt or whatever, piece of a jeans, I don't know, anything. Just put it right there, right? That way to keep from tearing up your little fresh powder coat, right? You don't want to mess up your machine. Okay, so you're about it, and we're going to try and get this guy at an angle where he's, he's kind of not completely uh, horizontal, but at a little bit of an angle there. Okay, so the, the pry bar end is going to come right here, and then the other, you know, against the subframe, and the other piece is here. Now, if you have the, um, the, um, the brackets, it'd be just as easy just to loosen the brackets now, the, the, the frame brackets, the stock ones, and then you could just line everything up and put it all together. But with the, uh, this Walsh subframe, with the uh, welded bracket, fixed bracket, you got to do something that's a little bit, uh, a little bit more daring. Okay. Let's get a good, a little good grip on there. Trying to slip. Like I just did. Yeah, sometimes it happens. Well, at least you know it's on there, though. Just by getting that right angle. That's a good one. There we go. Right. So it might take a couple tries. No problem. You'll see it slide forward. Like you just did. And then you could gently. I want to get your fingers pinched. At least get it close to. And the bolt hole's coming up. And I can work that guy on in. Right. So there we go. So yeah, there's a little bit of force on there. I'm not going to deny that. No way around it. Now that you're. I mean, because the, the sub. The. The subframe and the Nerf bars are sandwiching now the uh, the heat shield. We're going to take it and move that guy down. Just like I did, just give it a little quick snap down. And look at our bolt holes. Our bolt holes are already lined up, literally. We're pretty close. And if, if, if you, you're not too sure, just grab yourself a, a Phillips screwdriver. And take a Phillips screwdriver. Now you can adjust it, you know, whichever way. A little forward, a little backwards. To make sure that the holes are lined up well on there. Okay? Our front one is in there well. I recommend always just trying it by hand first. So we know that your bolt is going to go through. Which that one is threading well. And the back one looks really on point and I think we're just going to go for it. If it's already on there really well, it's just as easy as to go ahead and tighten that guy. And then go for it. Okay, so we got our, our heat shield there. Then also to our, our shielding for our brake line. We don't want our brake line getting messed up, right? That's a, that's no good. That's a good thing to have on there. Gentle with the impact gun, so it didn't go too ham. Okay. Gentle. Do it all I feel. If it doesn't want to push it, well, don't. You know, readjust. Now we're going to get our, our, we put our 10 millimeter socket on the impact gun. Now we have our 10 millimeter bolt. Still do the same thing. Get your thumb over the top. All right, thumb over the top. Give it a squeeze. In fact, we got the screwdriver again. That works great. Not good tonight. It is gonna be tougher, way tougher than before. Cause now we got another piece of material pinched in there. I actually need to use two hands this time now. There we go. Just to get it to move. So get a little move. Once it moves, see now you can stick the screwdriver, pull it in place. Just need to move it. That's all. Cause we had you know something else there. Now let it move. Pull up. And it's easy to clamp with the hand. Get the bolt in there. 
Got our impact gun. Ready? And I had to start threading it by hand. I already got a few threads in. And well, let the impact gun do the rest. That way you know you're not stripping it. Went in no problem. I can feel the bolt on the back side. Fantastic. And there you go. Our heat shield now is installed. We don't have to worry about that. That's gonna reflect a lot of the heat that's coming that's coming through, but then also to a lot of the cool without getting your leg burn. Oh, um, that's a great thing. Or, or burning, you know, your boots to death. So this this is a fantastic thing. I highly recommend it a lot. I mean, it is a, a gem to have on there. Honestly, I believe from factory should be on there on the machine from factory, but that's just me, me you know, personally. But if not, that's what RP races for. Use their, use that, and I'm telling you, you can literally set it and forget it kind of deal. You can leave it on there. You can take the subframe off and everything, and you can leave it on there still on that one bolt if need be, and you don't have to keep on messing with it and fiddling with it. But once it's on there, it is on there and it's gonna stay on there and it's gonna do its job and protect like you need to. All right, very good. Looks fantastic. Now we're gonna go to our part, to our uh, foot brake installation. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our, our uh, brake pedal, oversized brake pedal installation. And before I forget, as far as the uh, heat shield, it does work on every exhaust I've ever put on a YFZ, so definitely a good thing to have so it doesn't have to be just for an rp exhaust it could be for a lot of different applications um going back with our brake pedal set of a set of curved needle nose pliers will make it a little easier to get the clip on the back of this uh, bolt and a six millimeter allen whether it's on a uh, uh 3h ratchet or electric you know your choice we need to get that clip off in the back uh, there's a spring uh, between the uh, brake between the brake pedal assembly and the chassis, and also too there is a, uh, a cotter pin to the brake master cylinder and the uh, brake pedal. So we got to get those guys off, and we will be ready. We'll have this thing off and out, and then it'll be a good time as well then to take this bolt out. So, uh, which I hate having that bolt there for the. Um, that's just me personally, you know. If you could save something, you know, if you could save some weight, you know, reasonably, then you know, let's do it. When we did the. Uh, the uh, the brake the, to delete the brake lights and the parking brake cable and all that stuff on one of our previous videos. So we're gonna get to it. We're gonna do the back of the machine because you have to take that pin that's on the back side of this bolt. You have to take that off first. So we're gonna go for it right now. All right, so we have a light on on this guy. That is our pin right there. All right, the bolt is on this side. Pin is over here. We're gonna get that guy off, and it's not just regular. Like cotter pin, you actually have to give it a little twist and pull off. So this thing is a little unique. So you tw you actually twist to give a little um, counterclockwise twist, and then it it uh, the other side of it will open up, and then you can pull it out. All right, we'll go back top side, and then show you maybe some easier ways how to get to some of these guys, or if you want while you're here, but it's a little bit tougher. See, there's our other cotter pin. I'm gonna show you on the on the top side, the easy way I do that. Okay, we're back top side. We have our six mil Allen on the ratchet. Get on in there, I'm gonna break it loose. Back it off. And there is a washer on the inside of this. So I put my finger there to hold it, hold that washer, which will take these guys off. Okay, washing that. And this is also good periodically to lube. Shoot with a little lube to keep that thing nice. And that's how your, your brake pedal keeps on working good. Set that off to the side. And so now with the uh, bolt out, it's a lot easier, in my opinion, a lot easier to Grab this spring, twist back. Cause it's a pretty tough spring. I'm not gonna deny it. You could turn and move this. It's not gonna hurt this brake master. You don't have to take it off. I never felt like the need to take that guy off. I mean, this is, to be honest, my first uh, on a YFZ. The uh, first oversized brake pedal I put on. I've put on many of them for Hondas 
and Suzuki's. I feel like the Hondas, they do much, much better with that. And this one's, this one's crimped pretty good. I don't know if we can see that well. So when it's crimped really that good, it'd be good to use like a small pocket screwdriver to open those up. You know, make so we got a quick small pocket screwdriver. And just open the uh, cotter pin. Right, like so. And that way it's a lot easier to grab with the pliers. And you do gotta bend these guys back. So then once it gets to that point, you really take your pliers. And give that guy a squeeze and see that almost fell out. So you squeeze it and you're straightening it up. Now your cotter pin. Little baby one. Put that guy away. If you, if you should replace it. Once it's bent. But if not, if you're gentle on it, I mean, hey, have I used them before? Yes. There was a little washer on the inside of that for the cotter pin. And then you take the main clevis pin out. Put those guys off to the side. Now, we got this guy to work with. I'm going to take this bolt out now while it's available. And it looks like, well, we're going to have to do some, uh, a little bit of drilling and grinding on this thing. All right, we'll take this back over to the toolbox bench. All right, so we got our brake pedal off. We're going to make some quick work and get this bolt out of here. Have our 3 8 deep 8 millimeter socket. Hold the one end of it with your thumb, finger. That guy's off. That would take forever with a ratchet wrench. Can be done. Every little bit helps. Now we're going to check out our instructions. 38 in here. So I'm kind of excited, you know. Open a fresh package. Go. This is going to be pretty cool. Awesome. Wow, that is actually significantly larger pedal. Now that I could see very well working, especially in our muddy conditions. Um, my last race, it was a little, a little wild. So the, the mud makes it a lot tougher. So anyways, I already know this guy has to come off. So we're gonna break out some, uh, some drilling tools here. And uh, yeah, we're going for it. We're gonna drill that pin out. In fact, you can actually, I mean, it depends on your drill. You can do it from either side, but we're gonna, we're gonna go for the back side here. Get them a little bit, a little bit easier. So, let's grab a couple things like safety glasses, drill bits, All right? A center punch, good center punch, and a hammer. And why a center punch? Well, that way you're not, you're not going all wonky on this thing. If you have a vice put this in a vise, but also too it could mar a little bit. So honest to God truth, no joke, a few two by fours to help hold this guy up right here would make life a lot easier. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up on a couple two by fours and just leave, our, leave them right there. Put a good dent right in the center with the center punch. That way we get, we're not walking on the drill bit. If you don't put a dent with the center punch, I promise you that drill bit will be all over the place. It'll be, it will be everywhere but where you want it to be. So we're gonna get set up. All right, so we have our center punch. Make sure you have a nice sharp one. It's not all dulled out. Small hammer. We have this guy set up on a few two by fours and a small sheet of plywood right to help hold it up. And show you, so if you don't have a vise, one way how to do it. And if you do put on a vise, you do definitely need to use like a way to not mar it up or beat it up because the jaws of the vise will leave marks all over it. Okay, so we're gonna, and I'm, you know, using my left hand. I'm gonna show you, you wanna get as center as you can. I, I'm used to holding with my left hand and I use the hammer with my right. And I'm gonna hold this guy down my wrist, okay? Yeah, there we go. And it will jump, there's no way around that. Okay, one little dent, that's all you need. Just one little itty bitty dent. Let me get a little zoom in on that, all right? One nice centered dent. Once that's there, it's easy to put this guy back, 
not too crazy, nothing too hard. You can actually put a few tools away. Only need one good little dent. And I, it would be good. You know, also, too, if you have maybe a bit of cutting oil, thread cutting oil, because this metal is pretty hard. Um, or WD 40, PB blaster, something to get it going. We're going to start with a 16th, 1 16th bit, our snap on drill. Now, I'm not going to deny it. We thought this drill was going to be dead when we did our uh, Nerf bars. No way on that. The uh, drill is smoking. Grab my thread cutting oil. That's how I use it quite a bit. It's so oily. Had to put a rag on it. One drop of thread cutting oil, as the doctor has recommended. I'm just going to throw some shavings. And we are going to drill this guy out smooth and steady. So this might take a little, we'll probably most likely speed up through this. Be patient. Don't go too fast. All right, so there's the idea. You go up incrementally until you literally drill through drill the rivet head off. You don't have to drill it all the way through just to take, break the head of it off. Once you do that, it makes life much easier. And because I was very centered, I was using a 930 seconds is what I finished at. So you'll incrementally jump up several drill bits at a time. All right. So this beast, it is already loose. Now we can bust out a hammer. That's what everybody's waiting for. Get some of your chippings, metal chippings, and keep that off the side of the rag. Okay, you gotta keep your, your work area clean, right? So now we'll bust out a hammer with a punch. A punch, not a center punch. Just a regular punch. This pedal's already loose. And there we have it. That guy's out of there, so. I do gotta say the uh, stock one is, it's pretty meaty. I would have to say it's probably the best stock one I've seen on an ATV. But, in comparison to the 38's Motorsports one, that is gonna be a nice upgrade. And also, too, it's lighter as well, so. Interesting, very good. So we get some of this stuff cleaned up, cleared out, and then we'll keep on going. So we could tell a sizing difference, very pronounced there with the uh, 38 Motorsports to the uh, OEM. Again, the OEM one isn't bad at all. It does have a good size to it, but literally where we could take the OEM one and stick it on top of the 38 Motorsports, like so, and you can see that there's more reach, there's more grip, um, less likely chances of missing the brake pedal, especially when coming into a, a turn at high speeds. So just, you know, an overall improvement. So, and it definitely feels a smidge lighter. Obviously being aluminum, so it should be. But beautiful quality, beautiful design. Really like that. I'm excited to get this guy on. And it's really nice. So, what I did notice was that, and like most other uh, brake pedals I've put on, if you want to move it forward or backwards, you can, based on that center hole. I am totally fine with the way where it's at. So what I mean by that, so maybe you have a larger foot, so to speak, larger footed person, you'd go where the center hole is, because there's three holes there, you'd go where the center hole is, and you move over, you'd move forward one, right? So we, we can see that that's not changing the pedal position. And it would be recommended you drill another hole through, you know, mark it on the front side, drill a hole through there, and put another bolt in. I highly recommend that a lot. Some people don't. Um, but I don't want to have a, a, a wobbly brake pedal. That's that would just drive me crazy. That's my personal thing. I don't have a problem where the position is, or if you have a smaller foot, you can go back based on personal preference. So that's a that's a, a big a you know a big upgrade. You can adjust this guy forward or backwards, whatever you want. So it is pretty cool. This is a four millimeter Allen. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to drop this four millimeter Allen at the the center one for this part here is a little bit shorter than the other two. I'm going to go to the center hole 
I'm going to snug this guy. I just know that's where I want it. I don't need to go any more forward or any more backwards. But what I do know is I want that I want this to be to be further out. And I do like how it's wider already. So I have been, especially in a race or something, or in, in a lot of races where, especially when it's muddy, that my boot sometimes I, I miss the end of this, especially so I'm cornering and I need to break, you know, already cornering because of the mud. So I'm going coming a little too fast or whatever, but just to slow my back tires down some get more control of the machine and where I felt my boot just catching the very tip of of this right here well this is gonna ensure that I'm gonna get a good firm bite of that no problem wherever wherever corner I'm hitting whatever jump to, to break in the air however it doesn't matter so this is gonna be a really nice upgrade so so whenever I've done this especially on, on, I'm not picking on Hondas cause I've done this on a lot of Hondas because their brake pedal I mean Let's just face it, it's not the greatest from factory. Let's just face it, let's just get it out in the open. It's it's definitely a good a good upgrade to do is put a, one of these deals right here on a Honda by a long shot. Because man, I just feel like they don't have enough. I feel like it's like a like a, a break for like a little kid's like PW or something like that. I don't know, like a PW50. I don't know what they're thinking there. <laughs> get yourself a little metal pick. Okay, I got some angular ones. Let's do it this even smarter way. Take yourself a little metal pick and draw yourself like a circle on the inside. I think I almost want these pedal be pushing back just a little bit. So wherever you want it, just tighten that pedal there. I know I'm just extra picky like that. Hey, I mean I gotta I gotta be you know know where my controls are. And with the uh, pick, this is a 90 degree pick. I am literally going to outline that circle. Inside, I mean, if you want, you can even show the uh, scratch it around a few times the area that needs to be drilled out. So, just go all the way all the outer edge of it. This is just aluminum, so it's not that hard. Sharp metal pick does quick work. All right. I definitely, I definitely do not want a wobbly pedal. With the, uh, let me see the brake clevis or cleat in there. We scratched it. We well, the 90 degree pick. Now we have ourselves a good basis there. Now we can see exactly where we need to drill. I'm gonna do no measuring, no nothing, because it was already in there. We need to take our center punch again, and I'm actually gonna put all three bolts in there. I mean, you can just do one, or you can just do two. I personally gonna run all three because I just know me. I have that kind of bad fortune. So, <laughs> I mean, and also too, if somebody else, let's say you know, wants to ride this machine, we could adjust it right there on the, at the track. So piece of cake. So, as I didn't put the drill bits away, we're gonna move some of these guys out of the out of the off to the side. In fact, I'm going to get a two by four to put there, and we will hold it up nice and neat. And we're gonna strike again with a center punch as perfectly center of these guys as possible, but this should be pretty easy since it's aluminum. So we got our, our brake pedal just again, quick and easy up on a little bit of support there. I'm gonna hit this guy, like I said, as center as possible. And what's nice is it's aluminum. If you gotta do it twice, go for it. But you don't have to hit it too hard because it is aluminum. Get as center as you, as you feel. You can actually rotate your center punch a little bit. Ah, it's beautiful. Perfect. Take your time. By taking your time, it's going to come out much better. And you're not going to be trying to drill giant holes if you don't have to. Look at it from all angles. Oh, it looks really good. Ah, what a beauty. Fantastic. Love the way it's coming out already. Again, to all my Honda peoples, I'm sorry if I was picking on y'all. I'm just going to say it like that. I mean, I know plenty of Honda folks. So we're going to start with a 1 8 bit.
cannot wait to uh, get this done. Now I want to do it on, my, on a race machine there. We still have, uh, we still have quite a ways to go. We, only, we just finished uh, round three on our local race series and we got a way to go still. Oh man, this is looking fantastic. So, oh my gosh, it does not get <laughs> better than that. I mean, I was like, that's literally like perfect. So, we're gonna put our center bolt through. We're going to put it on loosely. And I already, like I said, I gave it a little tap there to clean it up. And I can see the other bolts. They just drop it right on in. Oh my gosh. And uh, we're just gonna take two. Wow. What a beauty. Oh, that is elegant. That is amazing. I got the feeling I'll be doing more of these here soon. The other reason why I want to run both bolts is that they actually overlap in the uh, in the center bolt. So that way, it's not gonna come out. Nothing is gonna come out of this guy. It is gonna be there. It is there to stay, like if it was factory, which that's what I like about Keaton's products and also RP's as well. Um, when you put these things on, I mean, these guys have really undergone a lot of R&D to give it like that factory feel. Like it's meant to be that way without a question, without a doubt, you know, it is there. If you want a little added security as well, not saying you have to do this, if you want to shoot a little Loctite on these bolts, that would be good. I think I'm going to. I just wanted to see what it, what it, what it looks like. And wow, that is, that is nice. That is, that's there. Like, that is, that makes me want to go ride this thing now. Now actually I'm starting to get the itch. I can deny it. So, anyways. All right. So we're ready to get going back to putting things back where they go. Where our spring goes here. You don't want that, that guy to fall out. Actually, yes, I like it the other way. Picky preferences. Going to put our pin back for our clevis. So remember the way it came out. This is good. Washer. And me personally, I feel that if you you turn that this uh, that pin upward, it's a lot easier to see. Not fighting it. Once the pin is in, the pin is in and the cotter pin. So our clevis pin and our cotter pin are in. Give it a rotation, 180 degree rotation. Grab that cotter pin and bend it back because you definitely do not want this coming out. <laughs> so, you know, cotter pin is important or something, anything. No, but a cotter pin is the correct thing, All right? And give that guy a nice bend. You can grab it and bend it. There we go. Turn again. So what I do is I grab it, grab it and bend it with the other side of the uh, cotter pin. The top side of it, that way it doesn't rotate on me. Just like that. And there we have it. If you wanna make it tighter, make it tighter. Awesome. This would be an easy time to install that spring. There we go, springs in. Okay, our pin with washer. If you don't, if you do not have that washer in there, this brake will not work because it will be it'll be itself against the frame. So get it partially on in, put the washer through, and turn by hand to start threading. Fantastic. Get a ratchet forward. quick work of it. Now I'm glad it's a nice long bolt and literally 
you do not have to turn this pin. All you have to do is just slide it forward. Slide it forward, it'll click, it will not come back out because of the design of that pin. All right? So you can actually go right into the bolt. That guy will not come out. And they have four holes on it, so you can actually do it without even having to get underneath it. In fact, I can see it. The angle on it, I can see it right on through here. A good visual. And there you go. Clicked on in. A nice click. And there you have it. Like that is beautiful work of art. So this machine has come a long ways. What a unique piece is on there from the heat shield to the uh, oversized brake pedal. Very nice. All the deletes. I mean, we are, we are right there. We are on that pinnacle. So very close. We got the right wheels and tires. We got the right nerve bars and bumpers. Oh, man, this guy has come a long ways. All right. So that was honestly a really fun project. I enjoyed it. Honestly, I cannot wait to get on the track with it and try some of these new things out. Um, fantastic stuff. The uh, only mistake I made is I didn't order two. One for my other machine. What was I thinking? So, a really big shout out to 38 Motorsports and all these other amazing companies. Wrath Racing, RP Race, Rossier Engineering. The list just goes on and on. Walsh Racecraft, you know, uh, GPS, CST. The list goes on and on. on. FTR Power Sports huge one there you know with us um yeah so i hope you guys liked and enjoyed the videos uh we just want to keep on doing you know making videos that helps and supports the communities helps and supports you know and promoting you know riding and safety as well of course and using your machine in a way that fits you for recreation and fun or for competition so we'll definitely be getting another one of those uh, oversized brake pedals um on our other machine so that's my only mistake uh, and we will show we have some more things coming up, like handlebars, hand guards, and then also too, I'm telling you, it's like that close for our exhaust shootout. Like very, very close. And in fact, stay tuned, stay, stay into it, it's coming. So thank you again for watching. As always, any ideas, any thoughts you have, please keep them coming and we're gonna go with that. Please like and subscribe. We have many more, many more interesting videos and helpful tips to be giving out. Thank you for watching as always.